Liver transplantation is amazing because the people who we list for transplantation are dying. So everyone we are looking after has got a terminal condition and transplantation is almost miraculous. These people go from having months or weeks to live to walking out of hospital a fortnight after their operation. It's a growing problem because our lifestyles have changed from how we evolved. So we're not, we eat processed foods, we are less active and we are overweight. And they're the three really, they're the three lifestyle risk factors for fatty liver disease. So fatty liver disease is an umbrella term. It's, it's real, the real nomenclature is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And that's a condition where your liver has excessive amounts of fat deposited in it. Um, that is not due from drinking too much alcohol. Drinking too much alcohol can cause the same problem. But this disease occurs in people who don't drink. Um, NASH is a subgroup, or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, is a subgroup of fatty liver disease. And that is a bad end of the spectrum of the condition. So that is a a subgroup where the liver has fat and is inflamed and it is more likely to progress on to advanced liver disease complications, so specifically cirrhosis and or liver cancer. Here in the transplant unit, the commonest reason we transplant people is for liver cancer and the commonest cause of that liver cancer at our unit would be fatty liver disease. So cirrhosis from fatty liver disease is becoming much more common as is liver cancer from fatty liver disease. Fatty liver disease will, if you've got another liver condition, for example you've got autoimmune hepatitis or hepatitis B or hepatitis C, then fatty liver disease is a independent cofactor, meaning it'll contribute to you doing badly um, independent of that other liver problem you've got. So it's bad for people who haven't got an underlying liver problem and of course it's bad um, in concert with other risk factors. Most of the public, for example, haven't even heard of it and if third of the Australian population has the condition, you know, that by itself is a really big problem. So there's public education about what it is. Um, you know, I think a lot, a lot of medical professionals probably still poorly understand it. Um, and of course, not only is it a risk factor for cirrhosis and liver cancer, but it's also a marker you're at very high risk of cardiovascular disease, so heart attack and stroke in the future, developing diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So it's a marker that you're your future is really, you're not going to be well when you're older. So that's the main, one of the main things I tell people about. But we don't have any drug therapies for fatty liver disease. And that can be quite nice for patients because a lot of people don't want to take drugs. So in 2020, there's no drug therapies uh, for fatty liver disease, although there's almost certainly drugs coming. Limit processed foods, exercise, lose weight. I think if you think you might have the condition, and might have the condition really means you're overweight, see your GP and go off and get a liver function test done. So that's pretty simple and easy. You know, information is power, so find out what's happened with your liver function.